house on your own is something you definitely realize you've taken for granted, you know? So I remember a day, uh, I can't say exactly what month it was, but it was probably like, you know, it was probably, uh, you know, maybe October or November of, of maybe, maybe October-ish. You know, September was brutal. The, the, the September after all of the stuff coming back to the shingles was brutal. But I remember a day, probably about October, getting my own car and, and driving up the hill away from my house and going, I feel okay to do this. And that was, that was probably one of the first times I was like, okay, we're on, we're on the right path after sort of it had declined for a moment. Well, I think you know you'll see references to my to my uncle uh, in the in the movie there, uh, who was a, probably a bigger part of my life than I can even explain. You know, when I was a little boy, he was he was sort of the uh, uh, in some way almost a, 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 a de facto patriarch of our family. Um, and to have you know he he he, he was the guy who, who conceptualized like the Jane Fonda workout. You know what I mean? Like that was like that was his thing. You know what I mean? Like he was he was genius though. Like in the video hall of fame, really 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 brilliant man. You know, and we we. You know, he, he was this uh, this icon in our family, and he got melanoma and he passed. And from his deathbed, he filmed actually a, a, a video that my cousin, who ironically is the one who shot the very first clip of the movie, um, shot as well. Um, and you know, the one where I'm a little kid in the beginning of the film. Um, and I think my uncle, you know, from from his his deathbed, he filmed a video basically urging all of us in our family, this is I know this is going to be brutal essentially, but if you stay positive, it's all going to come together. This will make sense eventually. It's never going to be easy, but keep your head, you know, above, so to speak. So, um, and that's my, tattoo. that's my tattoo. It was in honor of, yeah, yeah. I actually had, we had that, you can see this shot where I'm shooting with my left hand and they're putting a pick line into my right arm right through the words be positive in my tattoo. When did you put that on? What's that? When did you put that on? When did I put what? The tattoo was probably, uh, I don't know, maybe uh, it was... Six or seven, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> My parents were very liberal. Um, but no, I got it maybe a year before, a year before I had gotten sick. Um, yeah, and, 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 and so I think that was such a huge thing that has been with me. I mean, obviously, before I even got sick, this was something I tattooed on my, my body, you know? And I think as a result, both myself and my family uh, lived that philosophy, if nothing else, in, in his honor. Yeah, and, they, and, and, and that was the idea, you know, it was if we accepted it, not fought it. You know what I mean? I think there's an idea where people battle cancer. It, 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 in some ways, it's very much a battle, but I think it's the battle is, is really actually accepted. Yeah. What, was, what was interesting for Josh and I was when we went back and interviewed uh, his family, is in, that positivity remained, and obviously he was feeling better, but you know, for me, it, it, when you recall like scary, maybe potentially sad moments in your life, you can, you tend to break down. No one in his family broke down at all. Um, in in any of Kelly, the, Kelly, Kelly did a little, but even she is a very, very, very strong woman. Well, thanks for being there for me. I appreciate it. Yeah. All right. How about you? Next? Ha <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I have a documentary about, no, um, uh, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm finally, in a, in a strange way, this is, the, having the movie out and putting Pastor out has, has been more liberating than I can even really muster to even talk about. I mean, I, I think, I came back from this, this what was it? it was right after the freight tour that we kind of all had our final sit down on the movie. Um, and I think it was sort of the first time that, that you know, this movie is, is been a bullet point along every step of the past four years because it's been something that's been worked on for so long that, that I think once it, it got finished, it, it really did set me free and kind of closed, in a lot of ways closed this chapter and, and, and all of a sudden I was able to sit down and kind of write music from a space that is, you know, the space I should be writing from. So, uh, so I started, I've started working, you know, I, I'm, I'm always in the studio, but I think in the past, you know, three or four months, Finally, had a couple of sessions that was like, ah, I think there's there's something here. So I'll start I'll start chasing that in November, December, January, and, and and hopefully put something together over the course of the next year. Or so. Oh, the rumors about that? Or did, who started those rumors? You're guilty. Was it me? It was me.
and Shaggy songs, you know, 2001, baby. Yeah, me too. Classic. Sorry, sir. Was me. <laughs> no, no. They, they, yeah, there's, there's definitely talk. I can't, I can't say what and when because, frankly, it, it truthfully has not been hashed out yet. Um, I think over the next few months, I'll say that that we'll, we'll make some, some progress in that direction. I don't, I don't. It's not going to be. We're not going to go make a new record. You know, what I mean? we're not going to go on some crazy, you know, hundred state tour. Not that there are hundred. Um, <laughs> but, but. But we'll, we'll do something. It'll probably now be the in the nearer future, and I can I can say that because we we're all talking we're a lot closer than we have. But I can't say what yet because I don't know. We, we shared a manager. It was a lot less serendipitous than you might think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but no, he, you know, like, you know, like any time, like, I went to Warner's today and I went and picked up Schwag. That's, like, what we do when we got, you know, it's, like, everybody bitches at, at people for not buying music, you know, but, like, name one guy in the music business who's bought a CD in the last two years. Um, so true. So, uh, he, Tommy went and got some Schwag from my manager's office. He's like, oh, check out this band, you know, and, and, and he, he got a copy of something called the Star Tracker and fell in love with me and the moon and then basically called me when I was in the middle of doing transit and was like, you know, you heard this story, but yeah, that's kind of that. Okay, so let's go to roughly about four years before you started. And looking back now, do you think anybody around you should have been that way? Do you think you should have been that way? No. I'm never, like, maybe if I were, you know, I, it, it, it's, I never would change anything anyway. You know, it's, 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 it's hard to even admit that, but I think, you know, in real time, you know, you're, you're going to make mistakes, you know, and I think you learn as much from your mistakes as you do from, from the right things that you do, you know, and so, yeah, I mean, I guess, the, 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 you know, to not say I haven't made plenty of them in, in those four years, you know, I think coming back from, from being sick, in a lot of ways, I went back to sort of reclaiming the lifestyle that I, that I was living before that made me so fucking sick to begin with, you know, pardon my language. Um, <laughs> So I mean, I guess in some respects, maybe I I, I would have would have changed some of that, but I uh, but I think that was also a lesson in itself to 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 me to learn that this was something I was sort of caught up in is the, my past, you know. And I, I think you know I don't regret any, anything at this point, not really. Except I think Josh thinks I regret we, something. We would we would have kept five more scenes. In the oh, listen to this guy. <laughs> if you want to ask Josh, if you regret read anything along the way. He would, he would say so Andrew so cut like five scenes out of the movie. So but scenes that I had to take out. Yeah. I think it's better as a result. <laughs> He's going to bitch at me on stage. He did this. Yeah, he did it in Chicago too. <laughs> I'm just Well, I'm glad that we can see each other again in a less speechless state. <laughs> <laughs> I was diagnosed seven years ago now with leukemia, and I had a stem cell transplant for seven years. I'm glad you're still here with us. <laughs> Did you kill any of it by any chance? <laughs> These guys, you know what I mean? They're circling. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, and, and for what you're doing, I mean, thank you. I think, you know, especially, you know, what she's talking about, a lot of people don't know about this, but um, people who are diagnosed between the ages of 15 to 22, which is where I was diagnosed and clearly where you were diagnosed, there's a huge question that goes on because there's not a lot of cancer research in this demographic, and also it's one of the only stalled demographics of, of 
success and survival. 